And here we go back on uh, Wednesday morning. Johnny Lee, first let's talk about Auburn. I'm sure you were down there. You and Nancy were there Saturday. Good crowd too, man. Yeah, we had a really, really uh, great, great time. And, of course, it was a, a special day for Auburn. And, uh, the, was like, everyone sad? Yeah, well, like I said, no, it was a re really a wonderful day. It was, like I said, it was Harvey Updike Appreciation Day. <laughs> and, uh, Have you ever seen that many people in Auburn during April? No, not for a spring game. It had a hundred thousand at the time. Oh, at, at least, at least. You know, there's eighty-three thousand in the stadium, and uh, which, which for this year set a record across the country as far as a spring oh, game. Yeah. But it was a perfect storm. I was on being there. We had a horrible season last year. Everybody wanted to show their support. Plus the Harvey Updike Appreciation Day. <laughs> and uh, but and then, and then outside was thousands and thousands. This in the paper right this morning. Gene Chiswick is isn't bitter about getting fired by Auburn and still believes he can be a successful head coach. Well, why be bitter? They paid you seven and a half million dollars yeah, to do yeah, nothing. Yeah. I'd be yeah. happy too. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, it's a pretty sweet <laughs> You got deal. a national championship and seven million to sit on. Well, it, and, it, and the truth is, really, Gene Chiswick is beloved at Auburn. He just uh, had a horrifically horrible season and didn't like you know the other day was the first SEC win we've had in over a year so uh, so so it, it, but he is beloved at all people love Gene Chizik but he, uh, he they, we definitely needed a regime change all right John talk about a few things then I'm gonna get back to my one of the yeah. subjects I've been discussing here uh, private personal public sin what's the difference here well, we were just talking about confession, a confession of sin, and, and uh, how we, when we were talking about the difference when you do have a sin, and it is just plain between you and God. I mean, that's the only one that, that's, that knows about it. Then the, the confession needs to be just between you and God. But if it's a personal sin between, like, your, yourself and somebody else, if I were to offend Roy or something, I would need to go to him and ask his forgiveness and plus the Lord's forgiveness. And, you know, you just can't say, Lord, I'm sorry I hurt Roy. I've got to go to them. But then if it's a public sin, then sometimes it requires going before the church or whatever it might be. And, uh, but those three levels of sin, we've got to watch out for. You got here, if God only answered the prayers of perfect people, how many prayers would be answered? Zero. <laughs> None. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Absolutely. And what Jamie's talking about, we were talking about Elijah, and in James it talks about Elijah was a man just like us, and yet we all know that Elijah, if you know anything about the Bible, was an amazing, amazing man who God did amazing things from, and I mean through. And in spite of the fact that Hundreds of prophets of Baal were destroyed, and Elijah had fire fall down from heaven, and all incredible things that he did. The same guy that did these amazing things for God got scared to death because the Jezebel, the queen, got mad and got after him. And so the same man who did incredible things for God got bitter, got angry, got resentful, got worried, got fearsome, just like we do. And, uh, and the greatest men of God ever have had moments and times of a weakness, just like we all do. Is there anything wrong with me just walking outside every morning and saying, Lord, look how good I'm doing? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with you saying that as long as you give the glory and praise and honor to him. Because the, the truth of the matter is he, you are doing very, very well, and we all are. And we go, Lord, look how good I'm doing because of you. Oh, because I left that part out. Yeah, you forgot that part. That's right. That's <laughs> right. That, that's right. I'm drifting, John. You know what? Uh, uh, we, we, all we, we, we all have, have talked about drifting and the danger of drifting. Um, you know, how many of us are maybe not as close to the Lord this time of the year in 2013 as we were back in 2012? We're drifting. And whenever we drift, usually we're going to go over a waterfall somewhere along the line. And uh, drifting is not a good thing. It, it happens to us, and Satan's a master at getting us to start drifting. Okay. Now, me and you grew up kind of similar, but, uh, but also very different. Yeah. <laughs> you got a thing here. Discipline was meant to be no fun. Now, difference yeah. in my daddy and your daddy. Right. You said your dad drank some, my dad drank some. Your dad smoked, mine did too some. But you said when your dad would whip you, he would tell you he loved you. My dad just beat the crap out of me. You know, <laughs> well, now he wouldn't tell me he loved me while he was doing it, but it was later. He, it was it was later, and really, and truly, yeah. <laughs> my dad. I think both of our dads. Uh, were, my dad just beat me. My my, my dad and. Well, your I'm not dad, saying I didn't deserve it. My dad and your dad were good at the whipping part. <laughs> and, uh, they, 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 well, you said you had to figure it out, though. You try to get as, if they got a belt or a stick, you try to get as close to them as you can, because you go in that circle and they can't draw they're back and get that big thing. Well, it, it, it's a, it's it, it, there's actually a spiritual component in that because Daddy would sometimes <laughs> grab my wrist and he just. You know, I need he's just trying to get to me, and I, 
you know, you know <laughs> just dancing around. But finally, I would realize if I would run to his legs and grab his legs and hold on, he'd be hitting and, and, and yeah. up in himself. I used to try that too. When I got about 16 or 17, he got yeah. he, he well, was shorter yeah, than yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, he still beat me, man. That's right. Yeah, he couldn't so, get to them legs. Yeah, that's right. Well, he went for the nose. Yeah, they, <laughs> Well, there you go. I understand that too. I've been there. That's a true story. I, 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 man, for me, I went through the same Tough. thing. You say you can never you sin in a vacuum. <laughs> you, you can't sin in a vacuum because you know, and we all have sin, and we all have done sins. We, well, we think we—it's no big deal. It's just a little personal thing. At, at, at every level, sin either hurts those people around us or hurts us, which therefore affects us, and we're not the kind of person we would be, which eventually, when we continue to make those decisions, brings us closer to the point where we're starting to affect the other people around us. Sin never stands still. And, uh, it, you know, and again, we can quickly respond and ask forgiveness, and that's a good thing, and then it's over and done. As far as East is from the West, he has separated our sin from us. But when we continue to process this and go this way and drift, Eventually, the other people around us are going to get affected. Now, I could go on and on about Sermon Sunday because I took a lot. I'm a good student there. I take a lot of notes. Yes, sir. I don't live by a lot of them, but I take a lot of notes. <laughs> Grudges. <laughs> I'm in on that one. I like not, it. Not, not your forte. Controlling our tongue. Uh, not, not your forte. Yeah, there, there you go. No, but no one has ever come to me for spiritual advice. You have a lifelong student. You know what, uh, <laughs> Well, not one person. I, 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 I bet you that's not true. I bet you that's well, not true. Now y'all call me a liar. Hey, let's see. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I can't wait for Lucian up here. <laughs> Don't just grow well, old. You know, well, Don't you, just grow old, grow I, up. I was going to say though before that, you, <laughs> you have your own TV station and you got preachers all over this TV. That station. That just made me look good. And so I'm just saying, <laughs> people tune in for spiritual advice to ZTV because you got preachers. So, oh yeah, yeah. That's, it's because you guys are good. That's right. There you go. That's Leading right. into that, John, I, I've got to ask you. Yesterday on the show, I, I, I made a comment. Well, some people didn't like it, but it's true. One person. Well, I mean, yeah. somebody else didn't either, but you got to learn to, this is the way it's going to go. I did a story, uh, I read about this lady had a florist show. Had a what? A florist. A florist show. Oh, she does okay. weddings and stuff okay. like that. Now, I don't know what state it was. Anyway, she had a gay friend. Yeah. He comes to her and wants her to do his wedding. And she says, I love you, but I cannot because of my love for Jesus, my relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. They hug the part, she thinks it's over. It's not. She's sued by the ACLU. She will lose. For discrimination. She will lose. So I said yesterday, I said... But the article said that if you provide a public service, you cannot discriminate against someone. So my question well, was... Well, now, first of all, let me say that I said yesterday, I said if a gay couple want... And we've had a wedding on our show before. They've since been divorced two or three times each. Were you there, Roy, at that wedding? <laughs> yeah, you were there, too. Not your uh, karma. But I said if a gay couple wanted to get married on this TV, in this studio, I would that allow would. it. Hmm? Some people didn't like that. So the question is, as a church, and I've talked you to Dusty about this too, what if they want to get married at Cross Point? Now, can you say no? Yes. And without any repercussions? Yes. Because I mean, you can't, the churches, what's the difference? Churches cannot be sued by the ACLU. Well, they can, they? they can be, but it doesn't mean they're going to win at all. And the, the fact of the matter is, a church is an institution set up by God, and so was this nation set up underneath the, the, the reins of God. And the, the, the government can't tell churches how to interpret Scripture. I mean, the fact of the matter is, um, I like what um, uh, you know. Somebody said about the new pope. Uh, somebody, somebody came He's out. He's Catholic, said, you know. Well, yeah, he is Catholic. <laughs> he is Catholic, you know. And 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 one of the, um, I like somebody. Somebody said, well, what's his stance about what the Bible says about homosexuality and all that? And another cardinal said, he's gonna stand on doctrine. It doesn't matter what the government says. Now, the government can make the life heck for you. Well, if you own a business, it does matter, though. Well, I, I, unfortunately, and that is the case, if you're going to do business under the laws of the United States of Alabama, I mean, of, of, have to. of America, which is part of it living in this country, that would take preeminence as far as offering a business. But a church, you know, is, is there to teach God's word. Well, they and, are exempt. 
basically. I, in my opinion, okay, see, and, as a TV station, I don't know if this would ever happen, but we are governed by the Federal Communications Commission. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. FCC. And they control my livelihood. Well, that, that, you know, and right, and that is kind of if you want to do business in the United States of America as a TV station, that's the way you have to operate. But a church uh, supersedes the government. Okay. And uh, as far as as that, and, and when they, they can to, still sue you, but they, they can sue. Yeah. I'm sure it'll wind up happening. That, that's a, oh, it what do you foresee? Yeah. Like she just brought. What do you foresee happening with this? It's going to get more explosive as we go. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, of, of course it is. Because, social media and stuff. Because, because, once again, it's not just about a man marrying a man or a woman marrying a woman. Uh, eventually, there'll be all kind of lawsuits about this. You've got to teach this. You've got to teach this. You've got to do this. Which, again, it's not just about the right to get married. It's not about that. It's it, What happens is, once again, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, a lot of thing, churches, you've got to teach this, you've got to teach that. And, will uh, a lot of churches and pastors across America give in? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How yeah. many did you say don't even read the Bible now? Yeah. I, it, uh, this is one of the reasons we are in the shape we're in as a nation. Because even the clergy of America, I don't know what the latest statistics are, but I mean, at, at least half of the clergy in America probably do not believe the inerrancy of the scripture. In other words, that it is, in fact, the inerrant word of God, that, in fact, the Red Sea did open. Right. And, uh, you know, that, that in fact, uh, Lazarus was resurrected from the, the dead. You know, those types of things. And when your own clergy across America by the, you know, by, by the jillions, and it was like I was even saying on Sunday, we have great, wonderful prayer uh, deals, and, and it's wonderful that we pray about Boston and all those kind. It's great that we do that, and yet at the same time, the same, you know, types of that 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 we pray about this thing and that thing, we turn right around and violate, absolutely violate what God has to say, and that's what I'm saying. It's like the teenager said, "Hey, Daddy, I need to borrow the car keys. Give me the car keys. I'm gonna peel out. I'm gonna burn rubber. I'm gonna come in whenever I have, I'm gonna drive drunk. But hey, give me the keys anyway." All right, Johnny, thank you for getting the keys. Give them back to me. Let me end this program here. You know how preachers get. Uh, right now, we'll see y'all tomorrow morning. Zach will be back in action. We'll talk about sports tomorrow. we got to go. We'll see y'all.